So I don't know who the first person was to become a SAG signatory producer and Taft Hartley themselves into the guild, but I think we should give them a prize of some sort of plaque, perhaps. Um, let's look at a hypothetical proactive actor uh, three years ago, before the new media agreement, who has the idea of producing an independent film. He wants to work with a uh, professional SAG actors, um, hopes to be one himself, so he becomes a signatory producer and hires himself in one of the juicier parts. Why not? You're producing. Um, could he or she taft Hartley him or herself into the guild? The answer is very clearly, well, it depends. Uh, on the contract, uh, the ultra-low budget agreement, for example, which allows producers to hire uh, both SAG and non-SAG actors in the same production specifically says that non-union actors cannot get into the guild under it. Uh, the short film contract, kind of vague, actually. I've heard of some non-union actors being tapped heart lead under it and some not. So it kind of depends on who's doing the paperwork when they get it. Uh, however, the new media agreement, very different, very specific. Um, Remember, I told you about the, the two big sections or the two sections in the big contract that dealt with hiring non-union producers or uh, non-professional actors. I can use my lips. Uh, union security and preference of employment. Well, let's take a look at those two sections in the basic codified agreement. Okay, union security. This is section two of the basic agreement, AKA union security. Uh, it's the part that actually deals with the uh, National Labor Relations Act of 1947, otherwise known as the Taft-Hartley Act. Really, don't fall asleep here, pay attention. This is the part of the basic agreement that specifically allows you, the non-union actor, to actually become a union member. So check it out. Feel free to read the entire thing. I've included a copy of it uh, for your reading enjoyment. Section B, here we go. The union agrees that it will accept as a member of the union any performer the producer wishes to employ. So it then goes on to qualify that a bit by saying that it does not include anyone who's ever been kicked out of the union or any other union. So hopefully that ain't you. Um, section D says that the producer agrees to report to the union the non-member's name, social security number, and, uh, and his first date of employment. So they do that by submitting a Taft-Hartley report, which I will show you later on in the program, because you will be filling one out. And subsection F is interesting because it's where the producer agrees to, quote, pay liquidated damages for each employment of a performer in violation of the provisions of this section two, the sum of $500. Hold on to that one for a moment. The other section that deals with non-union members is section 14, also called preference of employment. And I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here because it's really long, but again, a good read if, if, uh, if you're interested. Uh, here's my summary. Again, not a lawyer. Read it yourself. Section 14, subsection A, basically says that preference in hiring will be given to qualified professional performers. Their definition of a qualified professional performer is anybody who has worked professionally in the last three years. Uh, so if you've ever gotten paid in the last three years for your work, then you are a qualified pro professional performer. Uh, subsection E says basically, Having said that, having said that we prefer that you hire uh, qualified professional performers, we really can't stop you from hiring anybody you want. That's what section E says. Uh, subsection F says essentially, but if you do, we are going to fine you between $600 and $800. So to paraphrase and oversimplify, Section 14 says a producer should, if possible, hire professional actors, but we really can't stop you from hiring anybody you want, but we can fine you. So how does this apply to the new media agreement? And more importantly, how is this going to get you into SAG? The new media agreement actually lists which provisions from the basic uh, uh, codified agreement actually apply to the new media agreement. So on page two, here's a list here of all the specific provisions that are included in new media. But there, what's particularly interesting, I think, here are the provisions that are not there. Section 14, preference of employment, for instance, not there. It's not listed, so it does not apply to the new media agreement, which means that as a producer, you do not have to give preference to qualified professional performers. And more importantly, they will not fine you for hiring anybody you want, even yourself. Okay? Now, 
See where it says section two union security, but excluding subsection F? Well, that means the part that says the union agrees that it will accept as a member of the union any performer the producer wishes to employ, that's there. But subsection F, where it says that they can fine you if you don't do this right, is not there. It's specifically excluded. So that, my friends, is the substructure of the super secret black ops ninja get your SAG card now new media window of opportunity, not loophole. The new media agreement is the only SAG contract that specifically gives you the superpowers of being able to become a SAG signatory producer, hire anybody you want, including yourself in a principal role, send out a properly full Taft-Hartley uh, report, not have to worry, uh, worry about paying a fine, and become SAG eligible. So, are you ready to become a SAG signatory new media producer? Almost. Before we take that step, we're going to need a couple of very important things, and I will tell you about them in the next module. See you then.